Good morning. Good morning. For those of us, for those of you who are aware, can we start recording all over again? Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. For those who are joining us online, welcome. I am Reverend Barbara Hess. I am joined today by Karen Ducharme, our director of music, Jay Ducharme, our soloist and technical guru. York Mitchell is our liturgist, and the beautiful flowers are from Bob Whitney. So I want to welcome the hearty souls. I did not think that there would be this many people. But then again, this is Second Congregational Church, my first uh, ice storm here a couple of years ago. There were 13 people, and now there are about two dozen. So yes, just be very, very safe going home. We gather today to worship and praise the God of awe and majesty. We come to encounter the God who knows us each by name and who walks with us in intimate love. We come to reaffirm the blessing we have received through our baptism. In baptism, we remember God's saving actions throughout history. And we have an opportunity to answer yes as God whispers our names. As a community of God, we gather today at the waters of baptism to reaffirm our commitment to Christ and to experience anew the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. This today, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whoever you are, and wherever you are in your faith journey and life journey, you are welcome here at UCC Second Congregational Church. Welcome. Please join me in the call to worship. God is always with us, is with us always, and calls us each by name. God is with us and calls us by name. When we are discouraged, we feel lost and alone. God is with us and calls us by name and heals us. Blessed be God, knows us and calls us by name. Amen. Our first hymn today is in your bulletin. He knows my name. <laughs>
Please hear the words of confession in your Lord and prayer. Sky scattering God, we confess that we have not always paid much attention to the baptism of Jesus, but we view it as a nice story which begins with Jesus' ministry. We don't want to see ourselves as standing in the long line of those minor servers, and therefore it is easy for us to discuss this nice story and nothing more. You have brought us our name, knowing each of us and loving us. We are astonished by this. We know that we have behaved in very unknown ways, and some behaviors which do not have your love and peace. Forgive us for our blindness, turn us around, help us to be people who not only recognize the body, but are willing to live their life. Bring help to others in your name. People of God, you are known and loved by your Creator. You are marked as God's chosen ones to bring hope and peace to others. Be at peace and live in hope. Amen. This morning's psaltery lesson comes from us in the book of Psalms 104, verses 1 through 4, 24 through 25. 27 to 30. <clears throat> Let my whole being bless the Lord. Lord my God, how fantastic you are. You are clothed in glory and grandeur. You wear light like a robe. You open the skies like a curtain. You build, you build your lofty house on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot, going around on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers. You make fire and flame your ministers. Lord, you have done so many things. You have made them all so wisely. The earth is full of your creations. And then there's the sea, wide and deep, with its countless creatures, living things both small and large. All, all your creations wait for you to give them their food on time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hands, they are filled completely full. But when you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. When you let loose your breath, they are created, and you make the service of the crown brand new again. This morning's New Testament reading comes from us from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 13 through 17. Bethlehem and Jerusalem were in Judea. Nazareth was in Galilee, in between Samaria. Samaritans were considered the enemies of the Jews. Remember the good Samaritan? The apostle Philip traveled to Samaria, where he preached, and many people became followers of Jesus. Peter and John traveled to Samaria, laid their hands on the believers, and then the believers received the Holy Spirit. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip, and seeing signs of the great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now when the people, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to do them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on them, but had only been baptized in the name of Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God. Thank you, York. The 
gospel reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 22. The baptism of Christ is covered in both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. And what we find in both Gospels is John is reluctant, John the Baptist, is reluctant to baptize Jesus. Who was he to baptize Jesus? But it's actually Jesus experiencing everything that humans experience. Jesus is showing solidarity with humanity. Hear now the words from the Gospel of Luke. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from the heaven, You are my son. You are the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear ones, today we celebrate Jesus' baptism. For us, baptism is when we become Christians, so it's not possible to do it more than once. What we're doing today is affirming our baptism. The sacrament of baptism is an outward sign, an outward and visible sign of the grace of God. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of our acceptance into the care of Christ's church. The sign and seal of our participation in God's forgiveness and the beginning of our growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. As I said, there's only one time in our life when we are baptized. Some are baptized as infants, some are baptized as young children, some are baptized as teenagers, and still others are baptized as adults. In another few weeks, probably about a month, we're going to have three baptisms in the same day, in the same family. Um, an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and a baby, so that would be exciting. Today, however, we are standing by the baptismal font. We will be standing by the baptismal font, remembering our baptismal vows and rededicating ourselves anew to God. We remember what it means to be baptized, what it means to be fully loved and accepted by God, and what it means to have God take away all our guilt, all our anxiety, all our frustration, and all our hurt. Remember that baptism is a symbol. It's a symbol that we have turned our back on sin and that we are willing to accept God's love and God's grace as a gift, the gift that it is. This morning we are demonstrating that we have placed our hope, our love, and our trust in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your spirit moved over the waters. Out of the waters of the deep, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Noah, you washed the earth with the waters of the flood, and your ark of salvation bore a new beginning. In the time of Moses, your people, Israel, passed through the Red Sea waters from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. Jesus was baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, became living water to a woman at the Samaritan well, washed the feet of the disciples, and sent them forth to baptize all the nations by water and Holy Spirit.
Bless by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that sin may have no power over them. God, remind each person of their baptism and what it meant. With the waters of their baptism, they are made to be a new creation in Christ. Remind them, gracious God, that there is nothing that you cannot handle. Glory to you, eternal God, the one who is and was and shall always be, world without end. Amen. In a moment, I will invite all those who are interested. There's nothing. This is the United Church of Christ. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. But anyone who feels compelled to come up, I invite you to come up the center aisle here, keeping space and keeping your mask on. You will then have an opportunity to take the loose piece of paper you've been given. Hold it between your hands as if you're praying and figuratively put all your guilt, your doubts, your frustrations, anything which is holding you back and keeping you from accepting the fact that you are God's beloved. You are God's beloved child. You are loved. You are precious in God's sight. Just as you are. Just as you are. Anything which is keeping you from being closer to God, I want you to put figuratively put that onto the piece of paper. And then I want you to place the piece of paper in the baptismal font. Keep your eye on the paper while I stir the water. When I stop stirring, if you want to take back that baggage, if you want to take back all that angst and unhappiness, reach into the uh, baptismal font and take out your piece of paper. If you choose at that point to not take back all that baggage, You've lost your opportunity to reclaim it. God now has it, and God is not letting you, as God's beloved child, take it back. Please now come forward, form a line in front of the baptismal font, and put all your unhappiness, thanks, questions. May the grace and love of Jesus Christ who has no ending, be with you. May the peace of Jesus Christ, who loves you as a child of God, save you.
beloved child. Bless you. Our next hymn is in the Black New Century Hymnal on page 322, Take Me to the Water. And this will probably be a new one for most of you. Surgery this month and next. 
Prayers for those who are traveling. Prayers for David Hellier, who slipped on the ice. Prayers for others who have slipped on the ice and who are sick with COVID, including the Southwick School, where three out of four of the special ed teachers were out this week. Prayers for Diana's friend Paula. Prayers of Thanksgiving that Liz is feeling so much better. Prayers for those who are dealing with stubborn infections and wounds. Prayers for Tom and his wife. Prayers for Charlie, Francis N, Dan, Sue Epp and her siblings. Prayers for those who are unemployed and prayers for John and Ruth. Please be with me in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, your word of light and hope floods into our lives. We have lived in darkness, in despair and fear, doubt and strife. But on this day of celebration, you remind us that we are marked by you to be witnesses to your light of new hope. As the heavens opened at Jesus' baptism, so is your love poured out on us. In the following period of silence, we lift up the names and situations to you, dear Lord. We are joyful that there are so many people who made it here today. We are joyful that there are more people who will be joining us online. We thank you, God, that everyone got here safe, and we, we ask that you guide everyone as they travel home again. We have brought before you names and situations which concern us, people who face illness and grief, whose lives are torn up by poverty, war, alienation, addiction, and hopelessness. We ask for your loving mercy on them, O Lord. Heal them and bind up their wounds. Help us to be people who are ready to be involved in ministries of peace and justice, bringing the light of your hope to those who dwell in darkness and despair. We ask this as always in Jesus' name. Amen. This ministry is made possible by people who not only donate once here and once there, but those who donate every week or every month. It would not be happening if it weren't for every single one of you and those of you who are joining us online. Lord, as you have so abundantly blessed each of us, let us return a portion of those gifts in gratitude for that which you have given us. Robbie? A prayer is also for Richard and Margaret, who couldn't get out of their driveway because if you've been to their house, their driveway is like this. Thank you. Please be with me uh, as we dedicate the offering. It's found in the bulletin. Gracious God, we come today with joy for your baptism. We come with praise for your glory. We come with gratitude for your love. As we offer these gifts to you, send your spirit upon us that our hands and our hearts may do your work in the world. As we offer our lives to you, bless us with your strength that we may join with you to work for the blessing of peace throughout the world. Amen. For those online who would like to donate at this time, you can go to our website, www.secondchurchwestfield.org, and click on Donate. We appreciate everything. And our final hymn today, once again, is in the Black New Century. Hymnal number 471. It's the old chestnut. What a covenant.
Now please be with me as we do the Common Commission as found in the bulletin. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. People of hope and peace go into the world, bring God's healing love to all whom you meet, all whom you meet. Help with ministries which promote justice and compassion. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Amen. <laughs>